Well hello YouTube and welcome to another video. In this episode I'll be showing you how to use a programmable keyboard to enter CDU data into the scratchpad. For example when receiving JTAG coordinates you can keep one hand on the stick and keep flying. Use the other hand on your keyboard to enter coordinates quickly. This way you don't need a pen and paper or you don't need to go heads down with the autopilot engaged to enter data into the CDU. So first off, let me show you in game, in a simulator, what I mean. Okay, we're in game now. So there's two ways to enter coordinates, basically. The first one is to use the upfront controller here. And the second way is to use the CDU down there. Then you have to go heads down, preferably with the autopilot engaged if you're in flight. But first things first, we will need to prepare a new waypoint, so for that you need to go to the CD repeater page on the right MFD and press this question mark with a number, so the next available waypoint is waypoint number 2. Press that button and now uh, you can enter the coordinates in either latitude and longitude or toggle the switch here to UTM to enter grid coordinates. If you have to enter grid coordinates, first of all, check that it's 38 tango or 37 tango. You can change it by entering 37 tango and pressing this button here. But for now, I'll just leave it even at latitude longitude. So first way is uh, on the upfront controller. Let me just zoom in here. You have to press the letter button twice here. Double tap it to stay in the letter format. And for instance, if you get the coordinate Lima Mike, tap this one the four key three times for the letter L and the button number five once for the letter M and then you have to go out of letter mode because as you can see on the I don't know if you can see this yeah that's better there is an L at the end of the bracket so press letter again now the L disappears now you can go to numbers so now you can enter any uh, digits or coordinate that you receive from JTAG once you've done that you have to check here it's in a scratch pad and you can enter it in the coordinates here or change the UTM first that's uh, better of course so even though you've entered the coordinates already you can still toggle this button on and off the coordinates will not display uh, will not disappear so you can toggle to uh, UTM anytime you want and then you have to upload it to this button here but CDU input error that's because I entered too many coordinates but normally you can enter it here the second way is uh, going to snap view, for example, to your CDU and then enter the same coordinates here. So Lima Mike and then enter, let me do a right uh, sequence of numbers this time. So one, two, three, four, five numbers. And again, one, two, three, four, five numbers. That's actually your easting and your norting. So that's 10 digits, 10 numbers. That means it's a resolution or an accuracy of one meter. Then you have to upload it to this line select key and that's where your coordinate will display now for uh, the second waypoint that you created. You can give it a name if you want, for example, uh, Tango Golf Tango and enter it here, that's the name of the coordinate. And uh, if you want to see the waypoint in your head up display, you have to go to mission first, select this uh, steer point dial to mission and then coolie head up to make the HUD soy and then you can cycle to the waypoints I'll zoom in on the head-up display so we start at 0 1 and then 2 is named target so that's your target waypoint with the coordinates that you created so as you can see this is a pretty tedious process um, it could go much faster I'll show you a different way right now I actually keep my right hand on the stick keep flying and as soon as I receive coordinates, immediately I press a button, a macro key or a G, a G key on my Logitech keyboard, which uh, presses left control and left windows. It keeps it down right now. So now I have left control, left windows pressed down all the time. Even though I'm not pressing anything on the keyboard right now, I'm just using the macro key. I'll show you later how I do this. And now I can just type basically anything in the scratch pad. So let me just demonstrate this see that how fast it is it's really really fast I'll just clear this out so when I receive coordinates I will go to my keyboard and type Lima Mike and then the numbers four five two one four and then another five digit number for example and then I upload it to the scratch 
port to the line select key here. So that's how I enter coordinates with my keyboard. Now I have to press that same macro key again, the G key. And that will basically toggle the state to release left control and left windows. Okay, this sounds all abstract maybe, but let me show you this uh, in the software how I do this and it'll be more clear. Okay, so first go into your settings here and then go to the control tab. Controls A, 10, C, SIM, and then go to the CDU panel option. Now you can see that there's keyboard shortcuts for the CDU keys. So if you press this keyboard shortcut, you will press the zero key on the CDU, one, two, etc. These are the numbers. And then the same counts for uh, the 26 letters of the alphabet, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, etc. And these all have their specific key codes. Now, it's not very practical to use your keyboard and press uh, left control, left win, and then uh, Bravo, for instance. That's three buttons at the same time. What I did is, I, in the software of my Logitech keyboard, I assigned one G key or a macro key. If I press it once, then it will use a script program, a scripting language, and it will keep left control and left windows pressed down all the time until I press that key again, and then it will release left control and left windows. So basically what that means is when I press the button G7 in my case, left control, left windows is pressed down, then I can just press the letters and numbers on my keyboard separately and the coordinates will be entered in the CDU scratch pad as you saw uh, before this in the simulator. Then I press at the at the end I press the G key again and then left control left windows will be released. Now there is one major remark or a side note when you are using an Azerty keyboard for instance. I have an Azerty keyboard as well. As you might already know DCS is a program to be working with a QWERTY keyboard so that means that if you're using an Azerty keyboard you will need to be interchanging or changing some buttons that are different in an Azerty keyboard compared to a QWERTY. So for instance the letter A will be a Q and vice versa. The letter Z and the letter W will be uh, interchanged and also the M key or the mic key that would be a, a semicolon. I'll demonstrate this here. So what you will have here CDU alpha key if you double click this standard this will be set to the following keyboard shortcut. So it'll say key button alpha and left control left windows. That's what it's going to be set at initially. However, if I press, let me reset this. If I press the alpha key on my keyboard on an Azerty, a Q is displayed. So you need to change that. You need to change it to left control, left win, Q key, and then press OK. But that's already done. So as you can see here, if I want on the CDU scratch pad an A key to appear, I press the letter A on my keyboard and on the CDU an A will appear. However, the keyboard shortcut for that is left control left windows Q. And you will need to do this as well for the other key here. So CDU Quebec, that needs to be changed to left control left windows alpha. And then for the Z key and the W key, exactly the same. So here CDU W key, that's set to keyboard shortcut left control left windows Z because if I double click that, if I want a CDU W to enter a coordinate with a W, I press the W button on my keyboard. However, that's a Z key. So I need to interchange that. Now I press C and that's a W. So you have to swap them around. So CDU W must be Z and CDU Z key is then W. So it's complicated. Well, I, I think you get the basic idea here. Let me show you now in uh, the software how this is changed in uh, the scripting files. Okay, so when navigating to this folder here, your uh, installation directory or the saved game files are in users, your username, saved games, DCS, config, input, A10C, keyboard. Now initially you will not have this file, the keyboard differences.lua. If you didn't change any keyboard whatsoever in DCS, so if everything is set at def default, you will not have this file. 
from the moment you change something, like for example, as showed before, the A key and the Q key and the W and the Z key, etc., then this will be saved in this file. If you double click it, you can open it with some uh, text editing tool, and I highly recommend Notepad++ because it uh, applies the styling and formatting very nicely. And then here you can see that these are all the buttons that I have changed manually in DCS. Now if I press Ctrl F, CDU, find next, then I can see here CDU alpha key. What you have to see here is there's a red line here. So what we're gonna look at is this block of text. I'll select it here. Here you get a long, long number that's irrelevant, but that's always the start of the new block. And then it says added or removed. And what's what has been added, so as you can see, the key is the Q key and reformers or the modifier keys are left control, left windows. So left control, left windows, the Q key has been added to the software in DCS. And what has been removed, the default key, it used to be at left control, left win alpha. And you can find this for all the other keys. So for instance, here, this is a new text block. I'll select it. Here you can see I've added the key semicolon with the reformer left control left windows. And that's the button, which is actually the mic key or the M key on my keyboard. So when I want to enter a coordinate that contains a Lima mic and a se series of numbers, I have to press the letter M on my keyboard. DCS will recognize this as a semicolon. And this is the one that has been removed. So I guess you have the basic idea now. Now, what about the left control and left windows? I'll show you that next. So now we're inside the Logitech gaming software. If you have a similar keyboard like mine, I have the Logitech G510, so Golf 510. But the uh, principle remains the same for other keyboards. If you have a set of buttons such as these here that you can reprogram, you can create macros or whatever function, then as you can see, the, the most simple way is these buttons. There is something written here on top of them, but this is the key, the G7 key that I will be using to uh, enter coordinates in the CDU and there is no label on top of that. I'll show you uh, in a moment why that is. That's because I use a scripting language for this button. However, these buttons, that's really easy. Double click them. As you can see, attack target is programmed to keyboard control left windows alpha. Now, if we go into a keyboard chart, you can see attack targets. So attack my target is left windows and the Q key. Okay, so again, here the same problem, the Q key in DCS, if we have an Azerty keyboard, we will have to set left windows alpha. And that can be seen here. So left windows alpha is attack my target. The next command here, this button is programmed to attack air targets. So which is left windows delta key. If you look at the chart, it says left windows delta here, attack air defenses. So sorry, I said air target, but it's actually air defenses. If I press that keyboard combination, left windows D, or I press this button here on my keyboard, it will attack air defenses. You could also go in the comms menu in flight, so the main menu, mic switch forward or aft or down, I think it's down for UHF. Then you have to select flight or wingman and then attack ground targets or attack air defenses. And then select the menu option for join up, open close formation, etc. So these are the things that I use. Free camera, that's actually very handy. I'll show that uh, later. And then uh, you've got view all for uh, the F7 view. So external view if you want to see ground units. You can uh, toggle between friendly units and enemy units. This button will uh, toggle to view friends only. So if I want to, the ones on my side, the ground units, I want to toggle by pressing F7 between friendly units. And if I press this button, then I will only be able to toggle between uh, enemy ground units if of course the mission or the server allows this to go into external view. Now for the G7 key, that's something else. If you go to default program, or a default profile here which is for windows and then you right click scripting then you see there's some just basic functionality here so i'll close this down go back to dcs do the same right click 
scripting and now you can see there is a whole script in here that's the one that i entered personally that i got from a forum on the internet so uh, to keep it stupid simple what this script does is when g7 key so the key over here this this button when that button is pressed it'll go into a toggle state and it will emulate the following keyboard presses left control and lg ui this is actually a uh, stupid name for the the left windows key so yeah you need to be a nerd to understand this i guess but uh, left control left window so this button and this button will be pressed both at the same time and they will be held down until you press the g7 key again when you press it a second time then left control left windows will be released so that's basically the script here that uh that makes this button work. I'll put the script in the description below so you can copy and paste it if you need it. Okay, so a quick recap. What do I do as soon as I receive coordinates in a campaign or from JTAC or whatever unit? I press the G7 key. This launches a script which holds down left control, left windows. So I press G7 once and release it. I'm not pressing anything right now. However, left control, left windows is continuously held down right now due to the script then I enter the coordinates using the letters on my keyboard and the numbers on my numpad on the right once that is done I press the G7 key once more and this will effectively due to the script release left control and left windows so no key is pressed anymore now I can use other keyboard shortcuts and use my HOTAS as you can see, if I go to my mouse settings, which is a Logitech G300 mouse, I programmed some buttons as well. For example, the F7 ground unit button. If I press that button, then F7 will be pressed. And as I said here on the keyboard, view friends mode or view enemy mode, this toggles the state of the F7 to cycle between friendly ground units or enemy ground units. So for example, if on my keyboard I press G18, view enemy mode. If I then use the F7 key on my keyboard or this button on the mouse, it will toggle between enemy units, enemy ground units in external view. And if I wanna toggle between the friendly ground units, I would have to press this button on my keyboard again to go into friends mode or view all. And then it just toggles between all the friendly ground units and uh, enemy ground units as you press F7. So that's this button. That button here is F10, which is basically the map view. Here I've got centered my track IR. That's pause track IR. And here I've got a view zoom in and view zoom out button, which I'll show later. This button here is used to control the vehicle. If I'm in combined arms mode and I want to control a tank or whatever vehicle, I press this button and I will be able to control it. If I want to go back to the plane, I go into the external view of that airplane, press the button and I will be entering the cockpit again. So let's talk about view zoom in and zoom out again. Now this is in combination with this button that I talked to you before. It's the free camera button. So what does this do? Free camera, if you press that, left control, F11, this is actually very handy. I'll show you in a moment in game what you can do with that. And then on the mouse, I will use this and that button in conjunction with each other to zoom in and zoom out. Zoom in is the following shortcut. So right shift with asterisk on the numpad and zoom out is right shift with the slash sign okay so we're in game again now and let me demonstrate to you now the functionality of the free camera view which is very handy left control f11 in combination with the zoom in and zoom out button that i showed earlier so let me unpause You can press the free camera button at any time, so if you go for example to external view and you press the G13 on my keyboard, which is left control F11, it, it emulates this keyboard shortcut, you can see that the airplane just flies away. So then, let me pause the mission before the airplane crashes, so there's the airplane. Now you can rotate your mouse and look around, so the moment that you press the free camera view, 
you will go at the present position into a camera mode and you can pan around with the mouse, turn around. Now you can also zoom in and zoom out. I use the buttons on my mouse for that. They are programmed to emulate the keyboard shortcuts as explained earlier. And these uh, zoom in, zoom out functions are really, really fast. So I press the button on my mouse now and you can see I can really zoom in fast and out towards the target area that I want to see. There's a smoke marker. Let me zoom in like that. It becomes much more sensitive as you become closer to the target. So to fine tune what I use then on my keypad, on the numpad, is the slash key and the asterisk key. So if I press asterisk now, you go in slowly. And if you press slash, you zoom out slowly. So zoom in, zoom out with slash and asterisk. And if I press the modifier buttons on my mouse, it'll go really, really fast. And I can move quickly to a new location. This is an instant action mission. I know there are some enemy units there as well. So you see, you can zoom in quickly and then scan the area, but the enemy units probably doesn't, ah, there they are, yeah, they did appear. So that's the trucks and you can pan around, move out like that, go back to the uh, initial target. There it was, there is a smoke marker and you can leave it like that. So what you can do next is if you go back to the cockpit, press F1, now you're in the cockpit. As you can see in the head up display here, that's the target and the free camera is located at that target. If I now want to go back to a target view, an outside view, I just press F11, that's it. You see how easy that is? You can immediately see the target area with the F11 button. If you press F1 again, you go back to the cockpit. Let me unpause and select some uh, weapons here. So we've got M151 rocket selected now. I'll go in the full snap view of the head up display. Go towards the target, fire some rockets like that. And now I press 11. And as you can see, the rockets are impacting the target. So that's really handy if you want to study up, the target. And then of course pull up again. Altitude, so that's altitude. the free camera view. So climb back. Let me pause just to be sure I don't crash. And then press 11, that's the target view. And again, you can zoom out, go to a different target and uh, zoom in and pan around with the camera. So that's really, really handy. And now let me demonstrate you the other external view keyboard shortcut, which is F7 or external ground unit view. So if you press F7 on your keyboard, which I did now, or press that button on my mouse, as explained earlier, I got it programmed to my mouse, you can cycle between uh, ground units. So press it again, 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 and as much as you hit the button, you can toggle between all the ground units. And then on my keyboard, as uh, said before, I have these three buttons that are programmed to view all mode, view friendly mode and view enemy mode. So if I press view friendly mode, which I do now and press F7, nothing happens. So why is that? That's because there is no friendly ground units in this mission, in this uh, instant action. But normally you can toggle between the friendly units that are on the ground, like the Bradleys and the, and the Abrams tanks and, and so on. Then press the view enemy mode button. Then you will toggle between all the enemy units that are on the ground. And if you press the button view all mode, then you can cycle between all the units in the map. This, of course, if the server and the mission allow it, because it could be that external views is disabled. So that was basically it. I hope this information was useful to you, that you learned something and that you enjoyed the video. So thank you for watching and stay safe. Bye bye.